to the desperate conditions in Germany, the number of armored units were reduced on November the 1st, 1944. Consequently, each armored company had only 17 or 14 Panzer IVs, compared to 22 tanks for each company in 1943. Many Panzer divisions returned to two companies equipped with Panzer IVs as in 1939. With the war progressing, the losses increased and on April 1st, 1945, each company was reduced to only 10 tanks. In June 1944, 11 panzer divisions were waiting in the north of France in anticipation of the expected Allied landings, with 863 panzer IVs out of 965 tanks. Obviously, there were many panzer IV Gs that took part in the clashes with the Allies which landed on the French coast. On June 11th, the 8th Panzer Company of the 12th SS Panzer Regiment of the 12th Panzer Division Hitlerjugend counter-attacked the 6th Canadian Armoured Regiment near mesnil patry reoccupying the town and putting out of use or destroying 37 Shermans with the loss of only two Panzer IVs, forcing the Canadians to suspend their attack. Willy Kretschmar, commander of the 12th Panzer Company of the same division, claimed to have destroyed 15 enemy tanks during the Battle of Normandy in his Aus J tank. During the winter of 1944, some 260 Aus J tanks were delivered to the Panzer divisions stationed on the Western Front. All of these took part in the Ardennes Offensive. The Panzer IV was the most used Wehrmacht vehicle in that operation. During the weeks of the offensive, many Panzer IVs were lost to enemy fire, however, most were lost due to a lack of fuel and spare parts than due to the action of Allied anti-tank weapons or tanks. During the Battle of the Bulge, the 6th SS Panzerarmee had at its disposal a total of 73 Panzer IV Aus H or Aus Js, out of a total of 178 tanks. Although less armored and equipped with a less powerful gun than the Panther and the Königsteiger, which were also assigned to the 6th SS Panzer Armee, they were faster, allowing for a rapid deployment on the battlefield. Above all, compared to the other German tanks on the offensive, they consumed less fuel, which was now a very precious resource for Nazi Germany. The offensive began on December 16th with the German attack at dawn, after an artillery strike that lasted over 90 minutes. Because of the ineffective armored support on the first day, the Germans were not able to achieve great success. On December 17th, during the battle for the villages of Krinkelt and Rocherat, there was a clash between M4 Shermans and Panzer IVs. Two Shermans of the 741st Tank Battalion supporting the 23rd Company at a roadblock in the forest were knocked out, forcing the US troops to retreat towards the two villages. The next morning, the Germans broke into Krinkelt, where some Panzer IVs and four Yak Panzer IVs clashed with a number of M4s and M10 tank destroyers, suffering some losses due to ambushes with bazookas in the narrow streets of the town. According to German records, which are incomplete, by December 18th, the 12th SS Panzer Division Hitler Jugend had lost 32 of its 41 Panthers, 12 of its 34 Panzer IVs, and 21 of its 40 tank destroyers claiming only 5 57mm anti-tank guns, 3 M4 Shermans, and 3 M10 tank destroyers. On December 18th, the Germans attacked a farm under US control near Krinkelt. In the fight, a Panther and a Jagd Panther were knocked out by 57mm anti-tank guns, while 8 Panzer IV Aus H and J tanks managed to neutralize the anti-tank guns. During the battle that followed inside the perimeter of the farm, 2 M4 Shermans were knocked out by the 8 Panzer IVs, which suffered the loss of two tanks. During the morning, two more M4 Shermans were neutralized while an attempt to advance by three of the six Panzer IVs in the farm was repulsed by a single M10 tank destroyer that destroyed all three. In the afternoon, four M36 tank destroyers intervened in the area, forcing the retreat of the three surviving Panzer IVs, of which two were destroyed during the retreat. Further south, on December 18th, the 5th SS Panzer Armee entered the city of Marnach with 12 Panzer IVs and a Panzer Grenadier unit equipped with 30 SDKFZ-251 half-tracks. The defending US forces attacked with a few tanks available, destroying 4 Panzer IVs but losing 3 M4 Shermans. 
Unfortunately, due to the incompleteness of the records, there is not enough data to determine how many Panzer IVs took part in the actions of the following days and how many losses there were. Between August and December 1944, Hungary, the last standing ally of Germany, received 77 Panzer IV LSJ tanks. Of these, 20 were requisitioned by the German command in Hungary to replace the losses suffered by the Panzer divisions. With regards to the 57 remaining Panzer IVs, nothing is known about their operational use. Finland bought 20 Panzer IV LSJ tanks in 1944 for 4.5 million markas each. These vehicles were part of the first Alfs J production series. Another 40 were ordered but were never supplied. These vehicles arrived without German instructors and too late. By the time they arrived, the Moscow Peace Treaty between Finland and the Soviet Union had already been signed. Finland took possession of 15 Panzer IVs, the fate of the last five is not known, and they were then used by the Finnish against their manufacturers until April 27, 1945, when the so-called Lapland War between the retreating Germans and the Finns ended. After the war, the Alf J survivors were used for training and nicknamed by the crews Ravistin, Shaker, because of the vibrations to which the tank was subjected during off-road driving. They were withdrawn from service around 1955. The Soviet Union captured hundreds of Panthers, Stugs and other Panzers on the battlefields during the war and stored them in warehouses. After the war, the Soviets finished the production of 28 Aust J hulls remaining in the Nibelungenwerk for Bulgaria. The exact number of Panzer IVs renamed by the Soviets as the T4 captured is difficult to determine. 165 were supplied to Czechoslovakia between 1945 and 1946. The other T4s that were crammed into rusting warehouses were probably dismantled in the 1950s. Like the Soviet Union, France captured many abandoned Panzer IVs in varying conditions from the retreating Wehrmacht. At least 11 Panzer IV Alps G, H and J were used by the Besnier Regiment during the war, although not much is known about the use. 40 Panzer IVs in poor condition out of a total of 60, among which were the 11 of the Bosnia Regiment, were sold to Syria between 1950 and 1952. In the post-war period, Bulgaria received 28 Panzer IV LSG tanks from the Soviet Union. This brought the total number of Panzer IVs in service in December 1945 to 102. By 1950, the number had dropped to 69, used mostly as bunkers or strong points in their defensive lines on the border. In late 1943, Germany began a program to rearm Romania. The program, called Olivenbaum (Olive Tree), involved the supply of armored vehicles of German origin to Romania to create an armored division and free mechanized divisions. Between October 1943 and August 1944. Romania received approximately 120 Panzer IVs of various models, called T4s by the Romanians, and 108 Stug Fries, called TAS, as well as an unknown number of SDKFZ 222s and AB41 armored cars. After the coup d'etat of August 23, 1944, Romania allied with the Soviet Union to fight the Axis forces. To replace the losses suffered by the Romanians in the fighting, the Soviets supplied the Royal Romanian Army with many Panzer IVs captured during the advance, in varying condition. The Panzer IVs and Stug Fries were used after the war together with other materials that the Soviets supplied during and immediately after the war. On November 15, 1947, the Romanian Army still possessed 13 SDKFZ-222 armored cars, 7 light tanks of various types, 54 T4 tanks of various models, 13 Panthers and 31 TAS assault guns. After the Second World War, Czechoslovakia had to re-equip its army. The desired help from the Allies did not arrive and not even Stalin could help. The Soviet Union supplied Czechoslovakia with 165 Panzer IVs of various versions and under various operating conditions between 1945 and 1946. A Czechoslovakian commission of technicians visited all the warehouses, German workshops and battlefields in the country and managed to find another 102 Panzer IVs in various operating conditions and many spare parts. 
Priluch and Tsekade reconditioned the vehicles and managed to bring a total of 82 Panzer IVs to operational conditions in 1949. The others, found to be irreparably damaged or with other problems, were dismantled and used for spare parts or at fixed locations. It is interesting to note that the repairs led to the modification of not only Aus G's, H and J's, but also other versions that were rebuilt with the longer barreled 7.5cm guns. This is the case of the hull of an Aus J that was re-equipped with the turret of an Aus D armed with the 7.5cm KWK-40 L-48 cannon. The Czechoslovak army renamed them Stridni Tank T-4075 regardless of the version. Some of these Panzer IVs received support brackets for a Soviet-made Dushka anti-aircraft machine gun. 80 Panzer IVs went to form the 1st Tank Regiment in Strasice, while the last two remained at a tanker school for training. CKD proposed a replacement of the steering system which was considered a defect by the Czechoslovakian army. However, the entry into service of the T-3485 made the project redundant. The gradual decrease of the availability of spare parts caused them to be withdrawn from service in 1955-1956. They remained in reserve until 1959 when they were used for various purposes. 55 were sold to Syria and some were used in movies. Another one was tested as a bunker, but tests showed it was too vulnerable. Another third was tested on a gunboat, while two others ended up in an armored train. The remaining Panzer IVs became artillery targets and only one was kept as a monument in the Leshani Armor Museum. Syria received 40 Panzer IVs from France between 1950 and 1952, 55 Panzer IVs from Czechoslovakia in 1956, and finally, 17 Panzer IV Aus H tanks from Spain in 1965s. We cannot extract the exact number of Aus Js received by the Syrians because of the lack of details in the Syrian sources. The Czechoslovakian Panzers cost the equivalent of 4,500 British pounds each. They arrived in Syria in November 1955, already overhauled with ammunition, but few spare parts. In 1958, another 15 Panzer IVs were purchased from the Czechoslovaks. These were not operational and were used for spare parts. 16 Maybach HL120 TIM engines were also bought due to the serious mechanical problems of the tanks supplied by the French. The only Syrian modification was the replacement of the MG34 with 7.62mm DT machine guns, and in some cases the coaxial machine gun was replaced with the 12.7mm Berejin UB machine gun or a Breda Safat 12.7mm machine gun of Italian origin was mounted. The Panzer IVs were used together with other German production vehicles, T-3485s and a few SU-100s against the Israelis in the Six Day War. At the beginning of the hostilities, there were 25 operational and 10 partially operational Panzer IVs. 12 were destroyed by the Israelis and another 4 captured. They were taken to Israel to be evaluated and then put on display. After the war, a careful analysis led the Syrians to remove all Panzer IVs and German-made vehicles from service for two reasons. The first was that of the German tanks used against the Israelis, not one hit an Israeli vehicle. Secondly, the Soviet Union offered to rearm the Syrians with more modern vehicles, such as T-3485s and T-54s and T-55s. Now for the variants. In February 1943, 60 Sturmpanzer IVs were produced. These were built by Bismarck Hütte, which produced the superstructures and Nibelungenwerke, which produced the hulls. These were based on the chassis of 52 Panzer IV Aus G and 8 modified Aus E and F tanks. Another 80 Sturmpanzer IVs came out in May 1944 based on the Aus H hull. The last 166 examples of the Brumbeer were produced by Deutsche Eisenwerke in Duisburg in two lots of 24 and 142 vehicles. These were based on the Aus J hull. A new turret was developed from the Panther Aus F project, the Schmalturm. This was designed in 1944 by Daimler Benz and it was also proposed to mount this turret on the Panzer IV hull, but the idea was never accepted. The Schmalturm was hexagonal in shape and had heavier armor than the regular Panther turret. The front plate had a thickness of 120mm, while the gun mantle had a maximum thickness of 150mm. The sides and back of the turret were 60mm thick. 
The turret mounted this 7.5cm KWK42 L70 of the Panther, renamed KWK44-1. It had a shorter recoil system to better fit the turret, allowing the cannon to maintain a plus 20 minus 80 degrees of elevation depression. After March 1944, the command variant of the Panzer IV J was produced. There were two variants, the SDKFZ-267, which was modified by removing 15 75mm rounds and installing an additional radio system, including cables, transformers, and junction boxes. In addition, a GG400 auxiliary electric generator was also added. The new radio sets were the FU-8 and FU-5. A Stern antenna D for the FU-8 was mounted on the rear of the hull, while the classic 2 meter antenna for the FU-5 was mounted in place of the Nachverteidigungswaffe on the roof of the turret. A TSR-1 observation periscope and a SF-14Z periscope scissor were also mounted. The SF-14Z could only be mounted inside a cupola so the commander could see the battlefield from inside the vehicle with the hatch open. The TSR-1 was a long stick periscope mounted on the roof of the turret near the commander's cupola and could be extended by a pivoting support. The SDKFZ-268 variant differed from the 267 by mounting an FU-7 transmitter receiver for aerial communications instead of the FU-8. Only 17 Panzer Befehlswagen 14 were produced from scratch, while 88 others were converted from already built Panzer IV-J tanks. Other vehicles based on the Panzer IV hull received modifications to speed up production similar to those on the Panzer IV House J, such as the Sturmgeschütz IV and the Flak Panzer IV Wirbelwind, Ostwind and Kugelblitz. The Panzer IV-70A tank destroyers also received similar modifications such as the adoption, in the last vehicles coming out of the factories, of the wire mesh skirts. The Panzer IV Aus J was a variant of the Panzer IV that cannot be declared a straight out improvement. Its ease of production was much improved with almost 3,500 being produced in 16 months, at the time when the German industry was being destroyed by bombing with fewer and fewer specialized workers available and with an acute shortage of raw materials. On the battlefields, it was still dangerous for opposing vehicles, even if it was vulnerable to the T-3485 and M4 Shermans armed with 76mm cannons. However, the loss of the automatic turret rotation mechanism had led to a significant reduction in its capabilities. That's all for this video. Make sure to follow our website, we'll be releasing new articles on the regular. You can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram or Reddit and if you use Discord there's a link to our community server in the description. Also likes, comments and subscriptions on YouTube are greatly appreciated. If you would like to help us continue to develop and expand also consider donating on Patreon or PayPal. All of the funds will be used to help us enhance and design new articles and features for you. Until next time, keep us in your sights.